Bill Presti, and I'm here with a pair of the Twin Comanche nose bowls, the Wow Cows from La Presti Aviation. Now the kit is a complete kit and does both the left and right side. Let me show you a little bit more about the kit themselves. You get this one out of the way, and we'll talk about this guy. Now, both sides, left and right, come in the kit. You get all the mounting hardware, the uh, receptacles, new cam locks. Uh, there's some metal pieces, and I'll show you about those in just a little bit. Instructions, drawing, FAA paperwork, everything you need to do this kit. It's a very simple kit to install, and we'll show the installation steps in just a few moments. Okay, let's look a little closer at the nose bowl. You have a better shape. We've pulled the inlets farther forward, so it's closer to the back of the propeller where there's higher energy air, so we make better performance, get better use of that air. Uh, the old stock nose bowl, if you remember, was laid way back and it lost a lot of that extra energy. Now the shape of the inlet's pretty important. You have a nice lip right across the, the edge here and a great diffuser duct. It's easier to see from the inside. This big long duct is all part of the kit and that's really what makes this kit work. Nice wide diffuser, uh, the air slows down and expands and pressurizes. You'll see baffling is pre-installed all the way around on the nose bowl uh, to help seal up any leaks that went back out past the propeller. Now, a lot of the testing we did on pipers, we measured the air that went in the inlet and the air that went out the outlet, and more went in the in than out the out. Where that extra air go? It snuck out past the propeller. So we make sure on all of our kits to seal up that leak path. Now the inside you'll see is shiny. Uh, we use a aluminized reflective finish on all of our composite cowlings to make sure that the heat stays away from the, com the composites and uh, keeps your airplane looking pretty. Now, you'll see that it, the uh, split line on the inside here is across the bottom. Uh, there's a big access door so that across the front of the airplane, when you walk up, you don't see that split on the side. You don't see it on top. There's no piano hinge. Makes the airplane look a lot, lot better. Now to install this kit is really pretty straightforward. Basically what we're going to do is take the old nose bowl off, slip the new nose bowl in place, and match drill all the holes, and that's pretty much it. They're getting started behind me here, and so I'm going to go catch up to them. See you in a couple moments. Uh, here's the cowling guy. We did. Okay, before we get rolling here, let's take a look at this airplane's engine. The, uh, it's in really pretty decent shape. The baffle seals should be changed. Uh, it's something I'm going to talk to the owner about. These ones look at first glance not in too bad a condition. When you look a little closer though, you'll see uh, there's voids where the metal baffle touches the case. Should be sealed up. The flexible seal should work like sealing the upper plenum to the top of the cowling uh, like sealing up a balloon because there's air coming into the inlet pressurizing this upper plenum and all these rubber pieces need to make that seal okay now this piece here I'm not in, don't understand the shape of that piece a lot of that overhangs out the back doesn't really do much uh, you look at it you can see that there's good marking here so this has been contacting the top of the cow so that's working pretty well I see a void here that's not sealed. Uh, this corner here isn't too bad the way it flops over and seals up. You don't want to glue the, the corners together or rivet them together because you want that to be able to flex because as that top cowl breathes and the engine moves, you don't want that seal to go away. Now this material here is better than the stock uh, black stiff baffling that some airplanes are still flying with. Uh, it's the flexible uh, silicone, but this is the stuff that doesn't have the uh, uh, reinforcement on the inside. Reinforcement makes a big difference because right here you'll see this has started to tear and it's just going to keep on tearing. So that reinforcement in place that stops that tear. This is also a little bit thick. Uh, we like the, uh, the 3 16 the 3 seconds material. It's a little bit thinner, uh, so it's more flexible so it seals up a lot better. Uh, now, 
this, whoever did the baffling last time did pretty well by putting these plates on the outside and that keeps the air from blowing in between. Most baffles I see out there that have been redone, they put the rubber on the outside of the baffle and pop rivet it in place and the seal actually stretches out in flight between each one of those rivets causing a long series of leaks. So we usually put the rubber on the inside so when it blows out it touches that baffle. Uh, you can do like this guy did, you put those plates on the outside and that sandwiches it that actually works pretty well. Uh, this side can use some TLC to fix up. This corner is a little bad. This baffling shouldn't be here at all across the front. That's supposed to be uh, the, the uh, felt piece around there. We actually have a baffle that contacts that in our nose bowl. So we're going to have to do something a little creative to make sure that all seals up nice and tight uh, when we're all done here. I'm not actually going to be doing the installation. We have Ed Hitt and Colin Emerson working for us here. And uh, Colin is only going to be with us for a little while. He's a student at Embry Riddle. Correct. That's another one of those Baltimore kind of places because they sucked a lot of money out of my wallet when my son went there. But that's okay. I'm over that now. I'm feeling better. But uh, they're pulling the side panels off, uh, repositioning. This airplane's just coming out of annual, so they're putting back on the panels that came off for the annual to get ready to do the installation of the nose bowl. Now on here, we're getting started. We put a sixteenth of an inch gap, and we're going to start drilling and clecoing and working our way out and going all the way around. Mm -hmm. Then on the sides, it's a little bit tight, but that's okay. We'll address that in the next stage. We're really more concerned about what's going on across the bottom, and we can address that by stretching and shrinking the nose bowl half. But we're going to get started across the top. Okay, we've got the toweling in place. We've drilled and clecoed, walking out all the way around. The side panels are on, the top panel's on, the bottom panel's on, and we lined up this edge so it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a gap, because we want a little bit of a gap there so it's not rubbing. And we've worked that all the way around. Got a little tight here, we'll, we'll fix that with a file and that we have the nose bowl up. And the gap is good again here, and we're going to follow that all the way around to the bottom. Done that on the other side. Now, this side of the door is not trimmed. We left it that way, so as you're drilling these, you can kind of expand this nose bowl or contract it a little bit to make sure this gap looks good. And it looks like everything's pulling together real well. Uh, what you to look for, and we ran into that on this airplane, is it looks like the belt for the alternator is a little long. It's going to be a little tight. So when we're all done fitting up, we may have to uh, go through and uh, change the belt on there to make sure there's good clearance. We'll look at that again uh, after we pull the nose bolt back off again. Okay, we have the nose bolt fit. All the fasteners are pre-drilled. We'll, when we pull the nose bolt off, we'll open those up and change these center holes out to either plate nuts or cam locks, whatever's needed there. The next step is going to be trimming this door. By leaving this door long, we could stretch this nose bowl out if we needed to, if we need a little more material here or contract it some if we had too much. So you can get a nice custom fit this way. Now, you have to trim this to match this joggle. There's a trick to doing that. A lot of ways to find that edge. I'll show you the way that I like it. We use a real high-tech tool that you probably haven't used since grade school. The compass. I'll show you how that works. Okay, we got the door off. Now we're going to set this at a convenient size. Let's use two inches. And we're going to go on in here up against the edge of the joggle. And swing an arc. Swing an arc. We're going to swing an arc all the way around. Right up against the jog. Make sure this doesn't change width. Stays at whatever size you pick. Again, I use two inches, but you can use any size you want.
while we're at it, I'm going to do the same thing here where the edge of this is. I've also had guys use one inch wide masking tape and put a piece of one inch tape right up against his edge and out. And then once the door's on, they take another piece of tape and put it on top of there, and that transfers the mark for you also. There are a lot of different ways. You can use a hole finder, you can just take measurements. Whatever works for you is the way you ought to do it. Now what we'll do is we'll trim the door up here a little bit, fit it on up into the cow, and then we'll transfer those lines from here back onto the door so we know where to trim it. Okay, now we put the door back on, hold it back into place, Take your compass the other way around and transfer the holes back or the line back. Well, that gives us a line to start with. We'll go in and take a ruler and mark it a little closer. Okay. That'll get us a lot closer. Uh, then we'll trim it. Don't trim it all the way. Trim it close. Leave a little bit and fit it. Better to go back and trim two or three times and make sure you don't over trim. So we'll do the same thing across the bottom. Now something to look out for. We're very close on the door to the alternator. Watch that. Uh, you may have to go in, after we fit everything up, we may have to go in and reposition this alternator uh, to move it up by adjusting the uh, either going to a smaller belt or adjusting the idler and repositioning that. So we've got enough clearance that we can go ahead and finish the fit up and we'll check how much uh, positive room we have when it's all said and done. Okay, we're wrapping this up pretty soon here. We've got the door just about fit. It's got the third fit up here. How's that looking, Travis? Pretty good. Please uh, fit it up, trim the edge, you always leave a little bit extra. You go back and check it and then trim again. You don't want to trim too much all in one shot. So kind of get close, leave a little bit, make sure it's right, double check it. And this is the third one, and boy, it's looking really nice. Nice fit up inside here. So he's got this far inch done, and then he's going to come in and trim the bottom. So that'll fit up nice. And then we'll pull the nose bowl off, install all the receptacles, and we're good to go. Doing good there, Travis. And then you're going to use a hole finder to put the holes on that far side. Awesome. I love hole finders, make your job a lot easier. Okay, Travis is doing the last bit of trimming. He's going to transfer the holes, and the nose bolts come off. Uh, when they go back on again, they're going on to stay. Remember, we've got that little bit of uh, check to do on the alternator belt uh, before we're finally fit up. When we're done, the airplane will get up about six more miles an hour. They have a little bit better cooling, and we'll look just a whole lot nicer. Access will be easier with that big access door. The cowling is a carbon fiber fiberglass laminate, really stiff. It's going to look brand new for years and years and years. If you need more information, go to our website, www.lopresteaviation.com, or give us a call at 772-562-4757. Thank you.